Hello everybody, welcome back. Jordan here. Today we're going to be checking out another rebrickable modular building. Oh yes, we are having way too much fun on rebrickable, building so many different uh, modular buildings for the city. It is absolutely fantastic. We recently discovered it and now it's like a big part of our uh, Lego hobby. So the one that we're taking a look at today is actually a redesign of the pet shop that came out a number of years ago. So that's half of the building right there. I actually had three of them. So I turned one into post. Uh, the original is pets. And then I had one that said beer, like a liquor store. Now the other half of it is this little brown townhouse right here. So essentially the pet shop comes with two modular buildings that sit on uh, 16 by 32 base plates. The two buildings are like completely different from one another, right? It was a lot of fun. I liked having them because, you know, they look good in like a little strip mall scene, but I figured I have three of them. Why not change it and make something a little bit different? So what we made is the rebrickable model known as a bookshop. I know the Lego City already has a bookshop in it. It's called Birch Books. It's an official Lego set. It's right here. But you know what, you go to small towns, for example, I was recently in Lethbridge and I noticed there was like five used bookstores in the downtown. I was like, you know what, we can have another bookshop, no problem. Got to give Birch Books some competition up in here, used books for sale. So uh, let's check out uh, the Rebrickable website where we can download the instructions and then I'll show you the full model. So of course, like always, we find ourselves back on Rebrickable.com. It's our, one of our new favorite websites, that and Bricklink and Lego, of course. And if you just search pet shop, that's how you're going to be able to find the instructions for uh, the rebrickable model or alternate build that we are going to take a look at today. And that's it right here. He's by these instructions from Inyong Bricks. Once again, another one from him. We actually recently built the Assembly Square alternate build, which is uh, the European Jazz Cafe. He's got a few others, but the one today that we're looking at is the pet shop and it looks pretty sweet. Oh, that's not it, that's something different. Oh, that's something different too. That's another one we're doing. Okay, where was I? Okay, we're right here. Yeah, this is the one that we're uh, taking a look at today. Oh man, we love this website. But yeah, you just download the instruction, or you pay for them, you download the instructions, you support Inyon Bricks by doing so, and there it is. So pretty sweet, there's professional instructions available on rebrickable.com, and we'll have a look at it uh, right now. Okay, so here we go. This is what we've converted the pet shop into. It's a bookstore and it looks completely different than the pet shop. It's it's amazing. I like it. Now, just note that the designer of this set used all of the parts and pieces from the pet shop. He did not include any additional pieces, which is nice because you can just buy a set from the Lego store. Well, this one's retired now, so you'd have to buy it on the secondary market, part it out, and then build something really cool like this that's sort of different for your Lego city. And it's just fantastic. But because they only use the parts and pieces available from one of the modular sets and they don't add any additional pieces, there are some constraints in which the designers have to work with. So there are some pieces in here that you're gonna have to add to make it just a little bit better. But I'm talking maybe like 10 or 15 pieces at most. And besides that, everything is awesome. So we're going to start right here. This is the entrance to uh, the bookshop, of course. And it's really neat. I love the angles of the windows on either side. And there's actually some stuff on display in those windows. Nicely framed there with some dark bluish gray pillars. Also, uh, some cones and some cylinders. A little flower element on the base of it, which is really neat. A different book on display right over here. I think this is one of the part constraints. They used a door here rather than a window glass. Very easy to change that out to a window glass. I have lots of those, so be able to do that, no problem. Just wanna show you it in its original form. A Little bit of a step up there into the front entrance where you have a black door. Definitely a nice ornament above the door. You've got a cat reading a book. Now I couldn't find my brown cat, so we used a white cat that we had, but that cat is actually supposed to be brown. Now, this book sits here loose. It's not clipped into place. I would like to modify it so that book is in fact clipped into place so that it doesn't move around when you move this building 
or place it into your Lego city, put it into one of the hard to reach areas and then the book falls down, that might be a problem. Beautiful set of windows just above that there, transitions into the tan color. You've got some nice accents on the building here along with the window sills. Uh, that are inset one stud and they're also in that nice uh, sand blue color and definitely a nice part usage for pretty much everything there it looks great uh, i love the flowers on the uh, outside of the window also got these one by two plates with the slide up here we've got some slopes leading up to our roof a nice window there once again with a nice window frame and then we have our roof on this side over here it is a walk through so here's one of the part constraints. I am going to tile that green base plate. I would much prefer that to be tiled, probably dark bluish gray to match the sidewalk. And there's a staircase there. And of course you'll be able to see inside when we get to that really cool wall here with some dark blue and dark bluish gray uh, pillars on either side of that entrance. A nice archway there. Got this rounded element here. Leading up to our other windows here, love how these ones are just sort of angled and then flat. Definitely adds a nice profile to the building and a nice ornament on the top here as well using some slopes, tiles, etc. Really good looking facade, fantastic. I will note that the roof has a dark tan piece there. We're gonna wanna swap that out with light bluish gray just so it doesn't look, you know, out of place but once again working with those part constraints right another part constraint is right here there's a white window rather than a tan window this is going to be facing the back of a street probably won't even see that it's got a slope over top of it which is pretty cool i like these pieces here too to create a nice awning over top of this rooftop uh, balcony or patio there really nice got some flowers there as well got some sloping on the back here just to represent a bush also a trash can. You'll see some odd shaped or sorry, odd colored bricks on the outside here. Obviously that's just to add some interior detail. These are snot bricks. So you got some detail in the interior that require that there, but exterior looks fantastic. Let's take a look at the base floor. The other two floors very easily detached from the base floor. It's only held on by one jumper. I'm going to change that probably going to add, I don't know, maybe a one by two plate or something like that here just to clip it into place because it does sit quite loosely. A couple doors there on the side, also a staircase right here. Below the staircase there's some flowers and also two mailboxes. There is a gap. This gap is seen when like the other building is on top. It sits like that, so there's a gap that you can see through. I might want to add some light bluish gray bricks there or uh, if I have it, sand blue, just to fill that gap in so it can't be seen. Inside the bookshop, you've got a really cool uh, bookcase, of course, bookshelf. It's got a ladder attached to the side. There is a table there in the center. You've got a cart there. Once again, these things are being displayed to the outside window. Got an open book there, sitting loose, just like the book that the cat is reading. And then there's like a magazine rack right here. I might wanna clip that book into place somehow, just so when I place it, if it falls over, I'm not stuck with having it, you know, falling over. And there's a little cash counter right here with a cash register. Then we can take this brown staircase up to the second floor. Second floor is pretty loosely held on. Once again, there's one stud there and there's a couple studs over here. This back wall is actually not connected to the side wall, so it's a little bit loose. But here we have a kitchen. There's a coffee machine, a sink, a fridge, a pan on the wall there, an oven. This microwave sits loose. Might want to clip that in place so it doesn't fall. And also that coffee machine sits loose as well. In fact, they added a 2x2 two two tile in here and put some loose things on top of it to represent a cutting board. We didn't include that because it just sort of fell all over the place. Uh, right there, there's a table with two chairs. Now, you'll see this here is sort of odd, but this is actually uh, holding this cabinet, I believe, in place, the fridge right here actually in place. And you see that same technique being used right here beside the clock. That clock is actually being held in place. It's got a thing on either side, and it's being held in place by that right there. So that tile locks that into place. Small little bathroom here with, of course, um, a toilet and a sink. There's a couple, or sorry, there's a window there just by the sink and a nice tiled floor. 
And then there's another staircase right here which leads up to the third and final floor. Of course, the third floor is sheltered by the roof. Once again, got to switch up that color there. Here we have a bedroom, so there's a bed and a side table there with a little lamp on it. The door there for uh, balcony access. Uh, there's a little desk here with a little chair and also a workout bench. And this is where the stairs will pop up and it's guarded by that little railing there with those white fence pieces. So that is the third floor. Now you see what I mean. I went to put the second floor back on and that uh, loose microwave just sort of fell down and the coffee machine moved. Definitely need to be clipped into a stud. Overall, I think Inyon Bricks definitely did a great job of taking all the parts and pieces from a pet shop modular building and use them to create something that's pretty cool for any Lego city. Pretty sweet. But you did see some part constraints there. Uh, I think there's some parts that need to be added to make this thing a little more, you know, secure, if you will. There's some things that need to be attached and also some floors that need a few more studs and also some tiles needed in this area right here. Let me know what you think of this rebrickable model by commenting below. Remember to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for some more great stuff. Peace out.